Oh yeah, I'm totally gonna win. Nothing could ever happen that will ruin this for. Oh. Like with many other successful games, the popularity of the Mario Kart series spawned a plethora of games inspired by it, also known as clones. There are very good ones like Diddy Kong Racing or the Sonic and Sega All-Star Racing series, and then there is... Garfield Kart. But a very unique one that doesn't seem to be very popular is... Even though this may seem like just a snowboarding game, believe me, it's definitely a car racer. There are 5 unique characters to choose from, Slash, Nancy, Jam, Linda, and generic fat guy that's always eating, I mean, Tommy. Each of them have unique stats which are divided into speed, corner, or handling, and trick. I always go with Slash, the spiky hair anime dude, or Linda, the sexy lady in a bikini with... Wait, she's 11? No call the police, I didn't know, I swear! Apart from each character stat, you can choose from an assortment of different boards that have their own stats, and they matter as much as the stat of the characters. Now, remember the last trick stat? Well, that's an important role in what makes this game unique. All characters can perform different tricks, which are done by pressing and holding the A button, selecting a direction, and releasing the button before a jump. Depending on which direction you choose, you can perform a different type of trick. You can also press any of the C buttons while doing the trick to twist your board to the side in order to gain more gold. The higher the trick stat of a character, the more gold they get. Now in this game, gold is not used to gain speed. It's used for a crucial aspect of car racing games, and that's items. In order to pick up an item, you need to spend 100 gold. If you don't have enough, the item box becomes the same nope. as a brick wall. This is very unique, since tricks are not only cool to perform, but they are also a tool to get items, which as you can expect are pretty much necessary to win. There is also one more way to get gold, and that's by picking up coins laying around the course, but you can even turn this option off if you wish for tricks to matter even more. Talking about items, this game handles them in its own way by dividing them into red or offensive items and blue or situational items. Red items consist of weapons you can throw at anyone in front of you. They always come in stacks of freeze and their effect vary for each one. For example, the ice shards freeze you in place. The worst ones are the parachutes, since when they get to you they make you fly upwards and slow the descent. The blue items are not as straightforward and can really vary. To mention a few, there is a fan that makes you go faster, what I think are pots that crash all other players, and a rock that makes others strip and is pretty useless. The red and blue items have their own separate slots, so you can carry two items at the same time, and they are used with their specific pattern, so you can choose which one to use. Like in other car racing games, which item you get is random, but is influenced by your position. So if you're last, you will most likely get the pots, or a fan, but if you're first, you often get the shitty rock. There aren't that many stages in this game. You begin with only 6, but can unlock 3 more if you get first on every stage. Since you're always going down a hill, each lap finishes with this chairlift that gets you back to the top. This is a special spot for a lot of shit to go down since only one character can fit at a time. Come on, get in, get in! Fuck you, Linda, go put on some clothes! To compensate for the small amount of stages, there are a few modes you can play. The default one is just a racing against three other CPUs, but there are a few more game modes such as a shoot game where you destroy as many snowmans as possible before the end of the stage, or a trick game where you try to reach the highest cost possible by doing tricks. Unfortunately, you can only play the default mode with up to four other players, the other ones are single player. Whenever you finish a stage, you're given some gold based on your score. This gold can be used in the board shop owned by this derpy dog. Here you can buy different boards or better versions of the ones you already own. You can also change the color of any of them. It's a cool incentive since even if you lose, at least you get some gold out of it. Apart from the new boards you can buy and the stages you unlock, there is one more unlockable. When you reach the ninth and final stage, which is Japanese theme, there's this new guy called Shinobi. Get it? Because he's a shinobi? Genius! Getting first in this stage is no easy task. Ninja Dude is extremely fast and his stage is almost just a small straight line with 9 fucking laps. I almost got it. This is it. You're going down. Motherfuck! Once you eventually beat him, he becomes a playable character. He's super OP in stats and has his own custom boards. So I would say he's good to be used by new players against experienced ones. Beating him also unlocks a few more boards that you can buy in the board shop. 
What's good about this game is that it took the formula of arcade racing and made it its own. It put its own twist on how the items work and I love the trick system. It's an awesome way to earn gold for items and each character even has their own custom moves which require certain specific inputs like if you were in a fighting game. These moves give you lots of gold but they can only be pulled off if you got a big jump ahead of you, otherwise the animation won't be over before you hit the ground. Even though this game is fantastic, of course it's not perfect. The fact that every weapon comes with free shots makes it pretty common for everyone to be armed, so when you pass someone there's a big chance you're gonna get shot in the back. And tricks give too much gold, so unless you turn off coins, you can rack up a lot of gold in certain stages, which removes the cool mechanic of needing to do tricks often to afford items. Regardless of these shortcomings, this game just oozes personality, with its unique set of characters and Tommy, custom art for each part of the menu and colorful graphics. I can't help but feel bad that it didn't get more recognition, I think it's worth playing even to this day. It did actually sell enough to warrant two more games. I haven't tried the second one but just looking at it I'm not very convinced on the necessary character redesigns they did. But oh boy that's nothing compared to the third one. Oh. Oh god. Please no more. What had it done to you Tommy? Have mercy! As always, thank you for taking the time to watch one of my videos. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing. It's usually $49.99, but today only is free of charge. You may also like this video or you can leave a comment and let me know what's your favorite car racing game. See you next time!